Meanwhile, here at home, the Republican-controlled House voted last night to include dozens of controversial amendments to the National Defense Authorization Bill. Among the measures are limits to the DOD's diversity initiatives and the approval to roll back a Pentagon policy that guarantees service members access to abortion. Far-right Republicans also tried to push proposals that would limit America's involvement in Ukraine, but those failed. A full House vote is expected today. For more on this, let's turn to Democratic Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill of New Jersey. She's a member of the House Armed Services Committee. She's also a Navy veteran. And I think I want to ask you from that perspective, as a Navy veteran, what do you make of these efforts by House Republicans? You know, Mika, it's really hard to know what to make of these horrible amendments that we saw last night. We passed this bill, this bill that we've passed in a bipartisan way for almost six decades through the House. We passed it out of committee um, with just about everyone on the committee voting for it, widely bipartisan. And then we get it on the floor, and because the Republicans have really ceded so much power in places like the Rules Committee, and then certainly on the floor to the far-right extremists in their conference, we saw this addition of amendments that, that just are unsupportable. Uh, things like saying, if you are a service member and you need to travel for reproductive health care or an abor abortion, um, we're not going to support that. Even if the state you're in, such as Texas, with about 120,000 service members, doesn't offer full reproductive health care. It's really shocking to see a travel ban, to see the DEI programs unfunded. Um, you know, when I was a leader in the Navy, I wanted to understand my troops. I wanted to make sure that they all felt like a cohesive unit, that I could lead well, and any sort of training to that effect was incredibly helpful. And so to see these members of Congress to be so out of step, not just with the American public, but with our military is really shocking. Congresswoman, it's good to see you this morning. You're going to be testifying, in fact, on the other side of the microphones about the importance of getting this legislation through, given your experience, as Mika said, flying helicopters in the United States Navy. What will you bring to that conversation as someone who has served, not just as somebody who is a congresswoman trying to get this through, but as someone who has served? What is this holdup from Senator Tuberville? What is this holdup on the legislation by some members in the House? What does that look like to somebody currently serving in the United States military? Well, Willie, I'll go you one better um, than coming at this as someone, as a woman who served in our armed forces, and I'll talk to you as a mother who has a daughter that is considering serving in our armed forces, and what that looks like to a 17-year-old, what that looks like to someone from New Jersey who's contemplating getting orders to anywhere across the country or across the world. Um, I served in Corpus Christi, Texas when I was in the military. She very well could do that and doesn't have a choice. That is your duty, to follow the orders where the military needs you. And so a young woman contemplating serving in a state that doesn't provide abortion services. And we now know that 46% of the country doesn't, doesn't provide that. So 46% of the women serving don't have access to that where they serve. So, you know, here she is looking at this possibility. Here we are in the military in a, record, a recruiting shortfall and she's looking at what the United States Congress is doing, saying they might ban her from traveling out of state to seek abortion care. Well, what do you think that does to the young men and women who want to serve? What do you think that does to the young black person who wants to serve and is being told basically that, no, we're not going to really lift a finger to make sure that when you come into our military, you, you feel like you're a part of the team and we want to make sure your leadership has you as part of the team. What do you think that does? What do you think it just does to young people in general when they're saying, look, I like a diverse workforce. I want to serve. I want to have access to good health care. But man, this, this military looks like it's taking huge steps backwards. I don't see myself in this military. It's crazy. Con 
Congresswoman, we shouldn't have to make the case, I think, anymore for diversity. There are just so many studies around the world now that show that organizations with more diversity in them perform better, whether they're corporate organizations, whether they're militaries, whether they're governments. But it seems that that's that's kind of the situation that we are in. You've you've uh, served around the world. You know um, the intelligence of all of this. It's, tell me a little bit about what this does um, in terms of the U.S. military's uh, perception in other countries when they see this kind of infighting and the political partisanship that there is in Capitol Hill. I, I, I've be, heard from people in the military before who've said, look, we have three big challenges in the world. We have China, we have Russia, and then we have our own domestic politics. Lay out for us how damaging this is in terms of Ameri the perception of, U of U.S. stability in the U.S. military in other countries. Well, let me just say, if I... An American citizen, born here, I've lived here my entire life. If I am standing on the floor of the House fighting simply to have our service women and military families have access to choice, have access to good health services, and I don't understand what the heck I'm hearing from the other side of the aisle, if I am hearing members of Congress use language that I don't think has been heard on the floor of the House since maybe the 1950s. If I am standing there thinking what the hell is going on in this body right now, I can only imagine what people outside of this country are thinking. And I can tell you it does not reflect the men and women in uniform who I've worked with or who I continue to work with. It, it, it does not reflect their priorities. It does not reflect their sensibilities. And it certainly doesn't reflect the greater portion of Americans I know who want to make sure we have the world's best fighting force with men and women who feel committed to our military and men and women who know that the people of America support them. All right, Democratic Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill of New Jersey and Navy veteran, thank you so much for your insights this morning.